hi welcome to our 40 days journey um exciting times for us we are really getting slowly slowly down there and uh, welcome on board today we are on to day 23 and if we have a little recap on what we did the last time on day 22 um, some of the things I really picked up was we are changed from the inside out. Um, we become more beautiful and we are set free to soar to new heights. This is really exciting because this new life we're looking at and this new growth, the new person we're trying to be, is an inside out business, is an inside out affair, is an inside out activity. It's not something that starts from outside in. So um, this is why I got really excited about taking this on. Because one of the things he really explained was when we start getting better, we are like the butterfly. The caterpillar that now completely renews itself to become a butterfly. So that's what we want to do. That's why we call it a new life. A new life is for us to see how we can change the circumstances that we're dealing with how we can change from the inside and become a new person and this is where you hear people say being born again and this is where you hear people like Eckhart Tolle saying a new awakening or a new earth so waking up from that life you've always known to become a newer person from inside this is what we're looking at that's why I get really, really excited about this book, um, and I'm happily sharing it with you. So today we are we are working on day 23, which is chapter 23, and the book we are reading is this book called The Purpose Driven Life, and it's by Rick Warren. Uh, last time I read a little bit about him and what major magazines and newspapers and people have said about him. Just go on Amazon and order this book if you can find. Um, like I said, no one asks me to read it to anybody. It's, it's not, no one's paying me to read it to you. But I chose to share it with you because I know the information in here will really help to transform all of us. Um, so that's, that's why I chose to share it with you. Because again, my kind of person is the one that shares. I love to share what I know. And this is one of them. Um, being that none of us can live in isolation. We've been told that over and over in this book. So if you don't live in isolation, you're going to live with people. And then how do you walk around yourself such that you can live with people? Oh, hi, Francesca. How are you, my darling? Thank you so much for taking time to watch this. And again, I'm so, so proud of you. Always proud of you. So I'm so happy that you're watching, watching with us and reading this book with us. Um, so welcome everybody on board and we'll got, carry on with it. So day, day 23 says, how we grow. That's the title, is how we grow. So God wants us to grow. This is Ephesians uh, chapter 4 verse 15. We are not meant to remain as children. That's the big message here. So this particular part, did not give us two verses he only focused on giving us one verse which is god wants us to grow like christ in everything actually it's two two verses um the second one which is we're not meant to remain as children is also ephesians chapter 4 verse 14. so those are the two verses we have to look at when we're trying to understand what this chapter is about god wants us to grow up that's a big message here our Heavenly Father's goal for us is to mature and develop the characteristics of Jesus Christ. So, sadly, millions of us Christians grow older, but we never grow up. And you know what I always say? Um, yes, he refers to Christians a lot in this book, but this is a message for all of us. It doesn't matter what religion you have chosen to take on. Sadly, most of us don't grow up into maturity. We remain as children. And we are stuck in perpetual spiritual infancy, remaining in diapers and nappies and booties. So he's trying to describe us like children. 
then the mother has to put na nappy on or diapers on and the message here is we need to grow in spirituality the reason is we never intended to grow up we as humans never really wanted to grow up we wanted to remain as babies so spiritual growth is not automatic it takes an intentional commitment so you have to think about it you have to plan it you have to decide that you want to grow up and this book is one of those books that's really going to help you start climbing your way slowly into mature maturity spiritually so we must want to grow we must decide to grow we must make an effort to grow and persist in growing that's the big message here we must persist in growing and so i i'm looking at it that yes very true with everything in life it must come from within so it is a decision you have to take to grow it's like learning learning any trade in the world you have to start from day one to pick it up remember in the last chapter where he was telling us that everything has stages and he gave an example of a building a building does not just start from nowhere and you just see a building there it starts with the first block and so the same thing with anything we do in life we must commit ourselves to say we want to grow that thing whatever it is including ourselves and for me personally that's why i chose a book like this because i realized that i wasn't growing in the sense of spiritually who am i what am i doing where am i going those are the questions i was asking and then this came up and so read this book for instance and work on your health read this book and grow your business read this book and grow your family community or friends so when you read something that begins to talk to you from inside growth starts to happen and that's where we're coming from so discipleship the process of becoming like christ always begins with a decision so again he's pulling us into christianity but that's the same way everything it starts with a decision you have to decide i want to do this jesus calls us and we respond come be my disciple jesus said to him to matthew so matthew got up and followed him it was a decision by matthew to say yes i'm ready to follow you when the first disciples chose to follow jesus they didn't know or understand all the implication of their decisions so this works with everything we do again whenever we decide we want to do something we never know what's going to happen in front we just know that we want to do it and that applies to whatever you are thinking about today you have decided you want to do this thing it does not matter where it's going you make that commitment and that decision so they simply responded they simply responded to jesus invitation and that's all we need to get started in life respond to whatever you want to do it shapes our lives than the commitment we choose to make so whenever you're committed to something nothing shapes your life better than that and i can tell this clearly from this example of deciding to read this book i committed myself to take it on and the same thing applies to everything else if you have friends and you find it's not working and you want to make it work you have to commit yourself to it if you have a family and you find your family is struggling and scattering all over the place you have to commit yourself to say i want to grow my family i want to bring my family together and the same applies to your community it applies to your business it applies to whatever you do commitment shapes your life more than anything else if you're struggling with health issues and you have decided you know what i really don't think i enjoy this i want to do something about it it is a commitment and you will stick to it i mean only recently luckily the weather here in the uk is getting better i've decided i've committed myself i'm gonna be waking up every day early in the morning to go for a run i haven't been doing that for a long time and i just realized you know what i really need to take on some activity into my life that's a commitment i have taken on and i'm going to stick by it so whenever you take a commitment that actually moves your life to a direction and so that's all we need to get started decide to be a disciple and be born new nothing shapes our life than the commitment we choose to make 
commitment to take up education, commitment to get married, commitment to have children, commitment to eat healthy and take care of your health, commitment to have friends. So these are just some examples, actually. Commitments can develop us or can destroy us. And that was, oh, so sorry, <laughs> something just dropped down. That was, that was a big one for me. Commitment can make us. Commitments can also destroy us. And where, where is an example of where commitment can destroy us? If you hang out with the wrong friends. You know what they say, show me your friends and I'll tell you who you are. Most times, especially here in the UK, which I know, young teenagers especially the boys they end up com coming for me what they call gangs and we know of so many people that have died from stabbing that's a commitment they chose to be in this gang and you watch so many movies and you see how these things are formed there was one movie i watched only recently and this young boy who was only 11 years old and they were already dragging him into this gang and the parents were so worried because they knew what it was going to come out of. And you know what they do? They, they do what they call it initiation. That's when they take on that commitment. I'm going to be part of this. And I remember watching a program too recently um, uh, from Channel 4 here in the UK. And it was by, about young, young Nigerian women who are taking on the commitment to come to go to Italy and become prostitutes. Now, what happens is they actually take them to witch doctors or whatever, and then they take on oaths that they are committed to take on that role. Because whoever sponsors these people has invested a lot of money into getting them across. And so they have to take on years of years. I mean, it's like slavery in another form. So they work so hard. One of the ladies they were interviewing said something like she sleeps with about 20 men in a day and get paid some ridiculous money and then she has to pay that money to the lady who brought her over that's a commitment but look at how that commitment has destroyed them so commitments can make you grow or they can also destroy you so either way they will define you either way your commitment could either great grow you or destroy you and either way they define who you become now that's a big message from this book. So we should be thinking very clearly the type of commitments we take on. He says, tell him what you are committed to and he will tell you what you will be in 20 years. So this is him talking to people because he gets, he gets to consult people a lot. So he tells them, tell me what you've committed yourself to. Tell me what you've taken on, that this is what I'm going to be doing. And he can tell you what you're going to be in 20 years. So can you start asking yourself, what am I committed to? I'm giving you an example. I'm committed to finishing this book. And I know great results are going to come out of it. I'm committed to taking on some, you know, activity, you know, early morning runs. I know it's going to help with my health. So whatever you commit yourself to, be very sure that it's going to define you. And it's going to make something out of you. It could be positive or it could be negative. And so, we become whatever we are committed to, he reminds us. It is at the point of commitment that most people miss God's purpose for their lives. So remember this book title is, What on Earth Am I Here For? And he calls it Purpose Driven Life. So it's at that point where we're making commitments that most of us miss out. We don't even know why we're here. And so, in the process of, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do that, and I'm going to do that, we end up completely losing out on what our purpose is on earth. Many of us are afraid to commit to anything and just drift through life. That was another one. That was a big one. I know so many people, you know what we're told every day, um, we have 24 hours in a day, and I think... I read something quite interesting the other day about the number of minutes, no, not many seconds that we have in a day and how we waste it because we are, we are busy drifting from one thing to the other. We don't really know what we want. He says, most of us, we don't commit to anything. We don't commit to anything. And 
even in marriage it's an interesting one because I, I know so many people who have relationships for a really long time I know a lady who was you know with this person for over 15 years and he refused to commit himself to marriage but it was okay for just relationship I know as women the usual thing is let me have your ring let me you know Beyonce sang it if, if you if you if you like it, you should have put a ring on it so why are you in this relationship for 15 years and you don't think you can commit yourself to put a ring on this finger and that's how people drift through life and for 15 years this this young lady wasted her whole life with this person or at least 15 years of her life she could have been committed to somebody else and maybe have children maybe experienced marriage and maybe would not like it eventually whatever it is would have happened but at least she would not have been left on the latch hanging on and hoping and hanging and hoping so that's what we do most of us in life we just flow through life from end to end and we have no idea where we're going and so others make half-hearted commitments to compete compelling values competing values which lead to frustration and mediocrity so again most of us we just make half-hearted commitments one day we want to do this and another day we want to do that and then we just float like that and all we end up becoming is mediocres. that's a, a good example of this is about training training in whatever skill which again we have our home package that's got everything you want to know about hair and then you get people who want to train and then halfway they're not sure they take on this skill they don't take it seriously they don't commit to it and then later they imagine in their head that it was the training that wasn't right and i have so many testimonials over the years like one of my gorgeous gorgeous girl francesca who has proved me right over and over and over she came here when she was only 18 and today she's made so much out of the training she got plus expanded and grown into so many other areas this goes to prove that when you commit yourself to something results come out and there's so many people who keep calling me here i want to be like her i want to be like her and i ask are you committed like she was or as she is because she knew from day one what she wanted and she committed herself to it so why can people commit themselves to what they want in life why do we just float around the unfortunate thing about us and about our life and about us being here is we have a fixed period that's the one thing this book has told us a million times the bible clearly says it too 70 years 80 when we are lucky enough and our body can carry us and 100 at most and when we when we know this is it why do we then waste our time on this earth just floating around becoming mediocre and not knowing what we want because what i say to people is if you like go into your bedroom and lock your door and say i'm not going to do anything for the rest of my life i just sleep in my room for the rest of my life and see if god's going to extend your life by one day no when the time comes for you to go you will go so if you like lock your room and stay in there don't come out and don't do anything with your life and see if one day will be added onto it and so if we know that why then do we not take on commitments why do we not take on risk why, why do we not take on whatever it is that the holy spirit would have planted in our head to say go and do this and you do it because when you do it god works with you remember one of the chapter he said we have to make the first move so that's what it is if you don't make the first move god is not going to make that move for you that's what commitment is about so every choice we make has eternal consequences so we better become we better choose wisely others make full commitment to worldly goals worldly goals that's what most people do becoming wealthy and famous and end up disappointed and bitter it's not just about making all that money 
and traveling the world and buying all the expensive jewelry and wearing all the cele uh, what's designer clothes and um, buying uh, uh, um, expensive cars because all of them will remain here all of them will be left here you're not going anywhere with them and so one of the chapters was about character building that's what goes with us the character we developed how much of people do you care for and he said two of the biggest commandment god has given us is to love god and love people and that's why area where i know most of us struggle loving other people every choice we make has eternal consequence so we better choose wisely peter wants us since everything around us is going to melt away remember that everything around us is going to melt away what holy godly lives should we live what kind of holy godly life should we be thinking of living we know everything is going to melt away and and there was there was um there was that story not story when uh, what's his name died um, committed suicide it was this um very famous actor i can't remember his name right now but what touched everybody was this man looked so happy he was a comedian his movies were amazing and he killed himself so question was what could have upset him so much to the point of killing himself we were on holiday when that story came out and i couldn't stop thinking about it because to the outside world this man had everything he had money he had children he had whatever he was but still inside he was extremely bitter or lost that's what we're trying to get out of this book the fact that life is not just about all the physical things we think there is god's part and our part as the next up um mini title so christ likeness christ likeness is the result of making christ-like choices and depending on his spirit to help us fulfill our choices once we decide to get serious about becoming like christ we must begin to act in new ways remember new life and some people call it born again so if we're beginning to think we want to act like christ which is loving people we have to start looking at ourselves we have to start thinking new thoughts we will need a, um we will need to let go of some old routines develop some new habits and intentionally change the way we think so he's now trying to remind us what that means he says once we decide to get serious about becoming like christ we must begin to act in new ways but we will need to let go of some old routines whatever all things we've been doing we need to let go of them okay we will need to let go of some old routines develop some new habits and intentionally change the way we think this is getting more and more interesting now remember we're talking about how do we change from inside out inside out is about how we think what are those thoughts that are going through our mind we can be certain that the holy spirit will help us with these changes so now we're looking at the holy spirit because remember i mean after i read this my mind just went on fire because i'm thinking we are spirits in human form now we need the holy spirit to walk with us so he can guide us in our thoughts bible says continue to walk out your salvation with fear and trembling for it is god who walks in you to will and to act accordingly to his go uh, good purposes so it is god who's acting in us to create whatever will that we take on so as to get to his good purposes what on earth am I here for? What is my purpose? Purpose driven, purpose focused. This verse shows the two parts of spiritual growth. Walk out and walk in. Bible says continue to walk out. So walk out your salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who walks in you. So we walk out and God walks in us. So we bring to practicality what God puts in us. And that's a big message here. 
So the work art is our responsibility. The things we project to the world, the things we bring out to people around us, the love that we share with people, that's the work out. We're working out. We're bringing God to reality. Because remember, God created all of us and God is in all of us. So it is these things he has put in us that we project to the world and share with the rest of the world. And every one of us is different. Every one of us has been given something different. So the walk in is God's role. So if anything today, these two pick them up. Walk out. We walk out what God has put in us. And walk in is God putting things in us. So, spiritual growth is a collaborative effort between us and the Holy Spirit. Do you see how it works out? So, we are here doing His will. We are here to do His will. Remember, we are created for God's pleasure. So, we are here to do His will. We are here taking on the instructions that He's given us. Um, sometimes I like to just call us servants we've been sent here to serve to 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 take on a role to we are missionaries in another form so we've been given a mission to go and accomplish and then we get here what do we do we forget the whole mission and we get distracted hence you see some of us just go through the process and commit to nothing and some of us actually do come into things and some of us half-heartedly come into things so walk out and walk in is so important for us because as missionaries as servants our role is to make sure we're taking on the job that we've been given and do it properly so God's spirit works within us works with us not just in us he works with us, not just inside us. So if he's put something in your head, on your mind, and you don't project it, and you don't bring it to reality, you haven't helped. You haven't helped. And I remember years ago when the voice came to my head, go and take on this training, or go and take on hair. And I remember losing my job then, and I had so many choices. I had so many choices of areas to go into. But the voice was going to her. And I remember people having a good laugh. Ha ha, what are you going to do with her? You know, you're so way ahead of her. But I still think orange. You know that advert, the future is orange. I still see orange in hair because there's still a huge market out there. There's so many people who are so ignorant about hair. They have no clue what hair is talking about. Especially the black hair. I get all kinds of questions all the time. And I say to us, it's not hair that's a problem. It's our ignorance. And whenever I advise people on how to care for their hair, they suddenly wake up. Because they've been living in the ignorance. They've been taking on somebody else's standards. Somebody else's understanding of what hair should be. And I say clearly, there are different types of hair. You cannot take on another person's way of handling her own hair to become your way of handling your hair. And this applies to so many things out there. There's so many things that we're so ignorant about and we're not willing to take on the job of putting the first block so that we can build a house. All, all of us want to follow suit. We want to follow any path that's been paved already. We don't want to work in offices. We don't want to put on that tie. We all want to look fancy and tell ourselves we work in XYZ office. And then you see people, when they say to you, where do you work? And you say, I run my own business. They start being snobbish. This is where we need to wake up and realize that God speaks to us in different ways. And when he has walked in something in you, you have to work it out. You don't have to sit there and allow other people to give you the standards by which you have to operate. Reading to believers is not about how to be saved, but how to grow. This is about how we should grow in life. It does not say work for your salvation because we can't add anything to what Jesus has done already. We're not asked to work for it. We're asked to work it out. 
During a physical workout, we exercise to develop our body, not to get a body. Do you see what he's trying to explain? When we go jogging, like I'm trying to do now, taking on the commitment to jog every morning, is not to go and create a new body. It's just to develop the body that I have. When we work out a puzzle, we already have all the pieces of the puzzle. Our task is to put them together. So if you have a puzzle on a board, oh yeah, where does that letter go? Where does that letter go? It's not about, oh, let me go and find a puzzle and bring. No, it's about putting the pieces together. That's what work out is. Farmers walk the land. Farmers, if you're a farmer and you want to till the land, you walk the land. Not to get land, not to develop what they already have. So you don't go and create land as a farmer. You just go and walk in the land. God has given us a new life. God has given all of us the opportunity to a new life. Now we are responsible to develop that life. And that's a big message here. We are responsible for making the life he has given us what it should be. We are responsible for taking on the role he's put in us, which is the working in us. He's put something in us. It's for us to make working out, to develop it. Not to become robots and follow everybody else because we don't know who we are. This is a big message. This first chapter is so in, in, immense. God has given us a new life. Now we are responsible to develop it with fear and trembling. This means to take our spiritual growth seriously. Spiritual growth because we are spirits. And whenever you say spirit, lots of people think, oh yeah, that's just Christianity. No, for anybody who breathes, who is alive, there is a spirit in you. So if you wanna grow that part of you, which is not seen, that part of you that when your body has had enough, moves on, then you need to start thinking seriously about your spirit. When we get casual about our spiritual growth, it slows us, mm, it shows we don't understand the internal, the eternal implications. It says when we get casual, like you're very relaxed about the you couldn't be bothered. <laughs> what is that? What are they talking about? It says what that means is you are not ready to understand the, in, the eternal implication, which is when the physical life is done, what happens next? That's what it means. It means you're not bothered about it. Okay, you might say, yes, I, I'm not bothered. What do I care? When that time comes, it comes. But at least understand why you're here. Understand to make sense of life. Understand to find out your purpose. Understand that you are not just dropped down here for no reason. There's so many children who don't get to come out of their, you know, their mother's womb. There's so many children who die um, prematurely. There's so many pregnancies that disappear uh, uh, within two, three months. Sorry, there's been a miscarriage. There's so many people who take on various forms of um they go to various doctors to just try and have a child so if you saw yourself here then there must be a reason why you're here and the reason you're here is what we're trying to find out that's the spiritual side of us it's not just about i mean i just thought about it the other day i was reading something today i got on um, whatsapp somebody sent to me and he was trying to explain how, especially in Nigeria, everybody finishes and will go to university. And then the experts, the brainy ones, get the first, first class degrees and second class degrees. And then, the, then they become specialists in whatever field, maybe doctors and lawyers. And then the next set who got the second class degrees become business people and then employ the first class people. And then the, the ones who didn't go to school becomes the politicians. And then they rule the, the business people and then rule the first class experts. And then the ones who never cared about going to school at all become the criminals, the underworld under uh, experts. 
and then they rule the politicians and then rule this uh, business people and then rule the experts. So do you see how weird this has become? We spend all that time going to school only to end up being ruled by somebody. So it makes you wonder, where, where are we really coming from or going to? Hence, it's important that we ask our creator, why are we here? Changing your autopilot in life. And so this is the next one. To change your life, you must change the way you think. I found that really, really incredible. Because there's a book that says, think and grow rich. And the first thing was, think and grow rich. And that has been on my mind all day. To change your life, you need to change the way you think. And that's why the caterpillar renews itself to become a butterfly. It all starts with our thoughts. So our thoughts create who we become. And so the big question I'm going to ask now is, where do we get the thoughts from? The, the thoughts that become what we think before we grow rich. Where are these thoughts coming from? He said, behind everything we do is a thought. Every behavior is motivated by a belief. So every behavior you present out there, there's a belief behind it. Just like me sitting down here to read this book. There's a thought that came to my head and the thought was, why don't you share this experience with other people? So he's saying every behavior is motiva motivated by a belief and every action is prompted by an attitude. God revealed this thousands of years before psychologists understood it. And he said, be careful how you think. Your life is shaped by your thoughts. So this is a passage in the Bible. Be careful how you think. Because your whole life is shaped by your thoughts. Imagine riding a speedboat. He starts to explain the way he understood it. Imagine riding a speedboat on a lake with an automatic pilot set to go east. So imagine this. Now you're on, um, on a speedboat and you set it on automatic and you set it to go east. If you decide to reverse, and head west you have two possible ways of doing that to change the boat's direction so number one is to grab the steering wheel and physically force it to head in the direction that you want to take it so this speedboat is on autopilot it's been tuned to go east but now you want to change the direction you have that choice of grabbing that steering wheel and pushing and pulling it with you to go another direction by sheer willpower, willpower, you say, I want to do this. You could overcome the autopilot. You could crash the autopilot that's been set up. But you feel constant resistance of the autopilot. Because remember, it's a machine. You've told it, I want to go this way. You've told it, go this way. Now you've come and said, no, I don't want you to go that way. I want to take you this way. And so you have to pull it. And with your willpower, you'll be able to, you know, keep dragging in the next direction. But... This autopilot is going to keep going back. Your arms will eventually get tired of the, of the stress and you will let go of the steering wheel and the boat will instantly head back east. So you, you get tired of forcing it and forcing it and forcing it and so the boat will just automatically, remember it's auto, so it's going to automatically go the other way. Instantly head back east, the way it was internally programmed. So from this stress of you trying to force it, it will automatically go by because that was the clear intention from minute one when it was set. But this is what happens when we try to change our life with willpower. So we're trying to force things on ourselves. We say to ourselves, I'll force myself to eat less. So again, you know, New Year resolution, you throw it out and say, you write out things, you say, this year I'm going to eat less and I'm going to wake up really early every day and I'm going to, so you've written down so many things, yeah? I'll force myself to eat less, I'll force myself to exercise more, I'll quit being disorganized and I'll stop being late to events or activities or appointments. Yes, 
willpower can produce short-term change so willpower just like that boat can pull it the other direction and you carry on a little bit until your hands get tired so willpower can can pull you a little bit but it creates internal stress in you and that's why you see people struggle to lose weight because we force it we don't understand why we're trying to lose weight and so because trust me i i did that i i took on herbal life at some point and this was after i had my third daughter and um i just went on this weight loss thing and yes i lost weight but it wasn't natural it wasn't natural and before i could say jack i was back to like it never happened